Calamity Jane. After my divorce in 1979, finding romantic bliss was not easy. But I wasn't destined to be lonely. Always some unsuitable woman stumbled into my life, like Jane. Having read all 24 Tarzan novels, I naturally assumed that Jane would want to swing with Jungle Jack. We'd run wild in the wilderness, be frisky in the forest. My libido envisioned untamed possibilities. Sure, sure, it's just a fantasy. I know women and jungles don't mix. But when I met Jane, I thought I saw a glimmer of hope. Back then, the Museum of Natural Science was presenting a series of lectures and films on astronomy from the perspective of the Native American Indians. I invited Jane to join me at the lectures, and when she accepted, I was sure we were heading down the yellow brick road. Over the course of the lecture series, the examples of prehistoric Indian buildings, rock art, and sand painting inspired me. I proposed a trip to Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, and Mesa Verde, Colorado, two places featured in the lectures and full of prehistoric Indian art. Again, Jane agreed. Were we in sync? I sure thought so. Our trip was great. With only a few minor spats, we harmonized and had fun. But once back in Houston, problems. Jane wanted romance, but not marriage or babies. The problem was not that Jane and I disagreed, but that Jane didn't know that she wanted what she wanted. So, of course, I didn't know what she wanted. If the situation sounds complicated, well, it was. See, Jane's mother had felt oppressed by the traditional role of wife and homemaker, but an obsessive compulsive personality insisted that she keep a spotless house, fix savory meals, and devote herself to her children 25 hours a day. Of course, back in the 50s and 60s, the perfect mother would never take a job outside the home, no matter how bored and unfulfilled she felt. When her children finally grew up and she was free, Jane's mother had no idea what to do. Desperate, she stumbled into Christian fundamentalism, rigid and inflexible, just the thing for an obsessive compulsive masochist. Horrified by her mother's example, Jane's ego wanted a more balanced life but her id panicked and sought to protect her from her mother's fate by never allowing her to acquire a husband or children. Meanwhile, Jane's superego would not let her consciously choose romance without marriage. So, every time a suitable guy entered her life, her subconscious pitched a fit and Jane fled. Never fully comprehending her reaction, Jane would simply say, oh, it didn't feel right. A few months after we'd started dating, Jane told me that our relationship didn't feel right. I had no idea what she was talking about. The notion of marriage hadn't entered my head. But we didn't break up immediately. Jane was better than nothing, so I decided to stick it out, at least till something better turned up. As a muse, Jane had definite limitations. If you think I'm going to pose naked for all the world to gape at, you've got another thought coming. But I'll make you a goddess. You'll be an immortal work of art. Ha! Ah, don't count on it. From Jane's point of view, I was hugely lacking in sensitivity. In 1986, I saw Aliens, the sci-fi horror movie. I went with a couple of guys, and we thought the story was terrific. The monsters were repulsive, the plot suspenseful, the battles were action-packed. After the movie, I came to the realization that though the hero had been a woman, I had identified with her. Could this mean I had evolved into a feminist? I thought so. Exulting in my newfound sensitivity, I invited Jane to see Aliens. Even the second time, the film was great. But after the show, Jane surprised me with a very different opinion. 
I can't believe you took me to such a horrible movie. Don't you have any idea of the kind of story I might like? You have absolutely no sensitivity whatsoever. I should have walked out. I'm such a masochist. Well, maybe I wasn't a feminist. Maybe Jane and I orbit at different planets, and in the attempt to communicate over very long distances, something important had become garbled in transmission. Maybe it was time to press the eject button and be hurled into another orbit.